is, is that Hispanic Americans, just like all Americans, but are, are super hardworking, great patriotic people and listeners of this show. It's the issue of Mexico is a collapsed, failed kleptocracy that is literally going into the Stone Age and collapsing. And then we're supposed to, I mean, yeah, the French had Texas. And uh, I mean, the, the, it's the six flags of Texas, folks. The Russians had California. I mean, do you see the Russians showing up saying you stole it? A few Spanish missions in California? A few missions in Texas? I, I mean, you know, there was a reason the Mexicans didn't colonize Texas, folks. It was because the Comanche would kill them. So the Mexican government called in the Tennesseans that had just wiped out in a war 100,000 Native Americans, which, by the way, they were losing the war for a long time. It didn't like all the Wild West movies where it's all in the 1880s or 1870s, where, you know, they're hunting down some Apaches in, in Arizona. No, 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 no. I mean, 100,000 man armies pouring down out of Illinois, led by freebooting white uh, pirates, you name it, you know, quote, the half-breed, whatever his name was, you know, and, and, and you know, that's the quote in the history books, you know, six foot and eight, you know, swung battle club, you know, and Sam Houston, death battle. I mean, it was just like, just like people with arrows all sticking out of them, whole cities burned, mass slaughter. There's no movies about that. It's the most fabulous stuff you could ever imagine, ladies and gentlemen, and I mean, not in a good way. I mean, beyond Conan the Barbarian stuff, okay? And the Mexicans went, uh, bring those people down here. Have them kill the Indians. And that's what happened. Full-on, absolute slaughter on both sides. Now, more often than not, people ended up intermarrying. That's why most people in Oklahoma or East Texas are Native American. There's almost no one, unless it's the old, rich, hoity-toity families that aren't part Native American. I got Native American all over, on every side of my dad's family. All of them, Comanche, uh, uh, just a whole bunch of other groups. Um, every time I try to remember all the different groups, one of them is the ones that got sent to Florida. And then uh, in one of those moments, what is, what's the one that's the main dominant group in Oklahoma? That's what I can't even tell you. Cherokee, there you go, Cherokee. The whole point is it, it, it's all over the place. So, so it isn't just like the history books told you. But the point is Texas does not belong to Mexico. Let's just get that straight who conquered it. People from Tennessee and Alabama and Virginia conquered it. And the, the death toll is, is, is in the hundreds of thousands on both sides, okay? So let's just get that straight. And by the way, the French were always, and or the British would flip-flop and combine forces. So you'd have British or French armies leading armies of natives. And the natives would come to you. This isn't in the movies. And I'm not demonizing the natives. This is the history. They would come and say... If you do not join us to have war party on the such and suches, we will burn your cities. Okay, we'll uh, help you kill them then. I mean, you know, this is why the natives could be beaten, even though they were outnumbered the whites and were just as warlike and vicious as the whites. Who were just about the most vicious people ever seen, by the way, historically after that point. I mean, Europeans just constantly were in war, folks. Totally warlike. So the whole point is, is that this, this was a giant swashbuckling war. And the, the language of the world, just talk about what's happening outside Houston, is English. The British Empire conquered the world. In international space communications, you speak English. The Internet's in English. It's not Chinese, even though there's a billion, 300 million Chinese. It's not Indian, even though there's a billion, 200 million Indians. It's English, folks. So it is a detriment let me tell you, if the world language was Spanish, folks, we would be speaking it. And a lot of people speak Spanish because there was a big empire. A lot of folks speak Portuguese. It was a big empire. There are a lot of people speak Dutch. It was a big empire. But you know how they all communicate with each other? English, English, English. The race pimps want to keep Hispanics on the plantation only speaking Spanish. And literally, as the Mexican government calls them, peons. And you look at the Mexican Congress, they look on average more white than our Congress. I mean, pull up the Mexican Congress. Everybody's about six foot five. And, uh, you know, a bunch of them have got blonde hair and blue eyes. Or they're about six five like Vicente Fox and look like a Spaniard. 
Those people never bred with the Indians, never touched them, and are just as racist as anybody ever was. In fact, I've got to say about the Mexican ruling class, they've been more elitist than the Anglos that intermarried with the Indians. So there's your fact. I am personally completely sick and tired of all of this crud. Knowing history, it's so frustrating. And the principle is right. That you need to have one language. Imagine going to Mexico and saying, hi, make your school bilingual. They would laugh at you. No one. Imagine going to Germany and saying, you're going to have this. And all this. They would laugh at you. Or Austria or Switzerland. Only in England, only in the U.S. is this joke because they want to bring in foreign populations and create them into little subdivisions that are controlled and balkanized to play them off against the domestic population. So there's the rest of the story. That's what's going on. And Hollywood doesn't want to make a movie. You, do you know how many grave sites I've gone to? We've got an old family cemetery in East Texas and another one. How many of them say killed by Indians? I mean, you go in these cemeteries and it's like a third of the, a third of the gravestones are killed, killed in, in, killed and scalped by Indians, killed by Indians. You'll see a whole family lined up killed by Indians. People go, oh, they were fighting the evil white man. No, they were killing Indians more than they were killing whites. We are not here to scare you or fill your mind with images of terror. There's enough of that already. We are survivalbagsinc.com, a veteran-owned company. We specialize in survival supplies, bags, and packs. In most cases, our survival bags, loaded with emergency food, water, and supplies, ship out in 24 hours or less, and prices start as low as 60 bucks. Go to survivalbagsinc.com and thank you for supporting a veteran-owned American business. Survivalbagsinc.com. Our mission is to help you survive. Clean water at home, clean water at the office, clean water on the go. The Berkey Guy has a Berkey water filtration model for anywhere you are and one that fits any budget. Thousands of satisfied customers can't be wrong. For free shipping within the U.S., go to GoBerkey.com or call 877-886-3653. That's 877-886-3653. Helping thousands prepare since 2005, GoBerkey.com. American gardeners and fellow patriots make the right choice with your money, time, and your family food supply. Choose 100% pure heirloom seeds in the Survival Seed Vault from MyPatriotSupply.com. Why spend more? The Survival Seed Vault from MyPatriotSupply.com is only $37.95 and includes 20 varieties of pure, hardy, easy-to-grow heirloom seeds. Yes, only $37.95. That's 70% less than our competitors. You could buy three Survival Seed Vaults for less than one of theirs. The Survival Seed Vault from MyPatriotSupply.com includes detailed planting and seed saving instructions and ship same day. Plus, all orders over $49 ship free. MyPatriotSupply.com is American owned by patriots like you. Passionate about freedom and preparedness. Call now, 866-229-0927. That's 866-229-0927. Or discover more emergency preparedness items when you order at MyPatriotSupply.com. Choose the original. Choose the survival seed vault at MyPatriotSupply.com. How can you save a ton of money and prepare for emergencies? By having your own in-home freeze dryer from Harvest Right. Now you can cut down on wasted food by freeze drying your leftovers. That's right. Create your own long-term food storage by freeze drying your own fruits, meats, vegetables, even complete meals with the Harvest Right in-home freeze dryer. Imagine the savings and the peace of mind. See how the amazing Harvest Right freeze dryer works at HarvestRight.com. Did you know that organic sulfur can cleanse and defend your body against the poisons we're exposed to each day? Organic sulfur crystals from sulfurdefense.com help by forcing oxygen and nutrition into your cells while eliminating heavy metals, contaminants, and damaging radiation. Defend yourself and family from toxic assault with one of the most critical and essential minerals available today. Order online at sulfurdefense.com. That's sulfurdefense.com. Or call 800-593-6273. What's happening, ladies and gentlemen, the is they're getting rid of the news system and journalism in this country. It was an inside 
They got mainstream media to discredit themselves by selling out. Then they lost their viewers. Now they're being basically shut down and turned to cooking shows on CNN and MSNBC. And race porn. And government worship porn. And now they're phasing out entirely access to press conferences with all the talking head teleprompter baubles like Obozo. And that's in the examiner, AP photographer hits White House. Once we lose access, we'll never get it back. You already lost access to being a journalist when you started parroting whatever the liar in chief said. Well, Obama says you can keep your doctor. Doesn't matter you're losing him. Reality is whatever Obama says. You guys are very nice, but please don't give me almonds during a three-minute break. It's hard to talk once you've been eating almonds. Those are good almonds, by the way. Kind of racist, though. Seattle said ban brown bags. It's, it's racist to say the word brown. And don't say bossy. That hurts women's fault. That makes them feel bad. I mean, I say this stuff, and it sounds like crazy satire. It's real. Don't say bossy, racist, anti-woman. Don't say brown bag. So I make a joke about don't say brown almond. In the latest media charge that the White House has reneged on promises to be transparent. <gasps> they reneged on promises? No. Two of AP's White House staff told a convention in Denver this week that the president's team of often bars coverage of Obama events because they are hypersensitive about his image. Hypersensitive, yeah. They only put him in pure fiction programs now. See, they don't need you anymore because folks discovered you were a fiction media. So now he's just going directly to fiction and people that suspend disbelief and watch Jimmy Kimmel and uh, watch uh, ESPN. And they sit there and they watch it and that's what they do. At the Newspaper Association of America Media Exchange Convention in Denver, AP White House photographer Charles Darpak, Darapak said that instead of telling reporters and photographers at a major news event, like the president's recent meeting with the Dalai Lama, it is issuing virtual press releases on social media. Well, yeah, that's the whole point. Because journalists are supposed to ferret out, is it a lie? Or what's the rest of the story? Or what did somebody else say about it? But you wouldn't do that. You would just repeat it and become what the system calls repeaters. So why would they need you anymore now that they have the digital age? You were no longer an individual. You no longer gave commentary. You no longer made them bounce their fraud off reality. You no longer reality tested. So you destroyed yourself. And almost all of you are now losing your jobs. As Matt Drudge in 1999 or whatever it was on C-SPAN. By the way, I want to find that press conference he did at the press club and play that. Because I remember when he said that and the media laughed at him. I want to find that sometime this week or next week. We'll find it now. Matt Drudge at the National Press Club. And then play that and see who's laughing now. By the way, it, it, they're still in denial that they're collapsing now when they've already collapsed. So there you go. I mean, now the media consists of low-grade morons like LeBron James and Justin Biebler running around promoting whatever Obama pushes. I, I mean, that's what we're reduced to, ladies and gentlemen. It must be Thank you for listening to GCN. It must be true because... Visit GCNlive.com I mean, today. A movie star said so. I mean, come on, get your health care now. In the last 50 years, iodine has been phased out of our staple foods and replaced with the halogen bromine, a practice now banned in nations around the world. Guess what else is in the halogen family? Fluoride. Ladies and gentlemen, Alex Jones here. In 1924, the federal government did the right thing and encouraged salt producers to add iodine. It's the good halogen on the periodic table. And the results are on record, reports documented, a 15-point IQ increase in areas that had previously been deficient in iodine.
Bottom line, iodine is important. Unbound, clean, in a glycerin base. Nascent iodine was the answer for myself.